What's good, Cyberspace? It's your boy Reclaim Your Throne coming at you with another crazy video. But first, my goal is to get to 5,000 subscribers by the end of the month. So make sure you go ahead and like, comment, share, subscribe. And you already know Reclaim Your Throne. Right here, right here, right now, right now. It's the right time, right time, right time. Right time. It's the right time, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Right now. Tell the whole pie down, pie down, pie down. So guys, we have to get into this video. We have a woman who appears to be Hispanic blaming white people because she's overweight. Let's get right into it. I'm gonna prove to you why white people are the reason I'm fat today. If white people didn't go looking for spices, then various sea routes to Indian subcontinent and Africa and other places of the world would not get discovered. Jesus Christ, I know she is not going all the way back to colonialism. <sighs> Look, the reality is people naturally are curious, okay? People naturally are curious, so you're going to have explorers who wanted to travel, who wanted to find out how large the world is, you know, what different land masses and land bodies are are on this earth. You want to be knowledgeable about your surroundings and the, the actual people in this earth. And there was a lot of confusion and there was a lot of lack of understanding or ignorance, if you will, um, <clears throat> back in the day when it comes to people of foreign lands so i mean this is an easy cop out for a lot of these chicks oh well you know i wouldn't be this because of that i wouldn't be this because of that even in the community oh well i wouldn't be you know broke if if it wasn't for slavery we could all play that card but what you have to do is take accountability for your actions and for your life and your current status as a human being right now and she is trying to deflect and defer that accountability onto a whole racial group when you know, um, it, it, there, there were only specific people who actually went in and, and colonized um, these lands. It's not all white people who decided to do that. Most white people couldn't even afford um, to, to, to travel overseas uh, back in those times. And if they didn't get discovered, then East India Company would never come to Indian subcontinent. And if they didn't come, then the fertility of the land would not get destroyed because they forced us to cultivate tobacco and dyes and opioid, things like that. And that destroyed the fertility of my country. Um, maybe she's from India, actually. I'm not completely sure. I think she said India. Um, <laughs> so now she's talking about the fertility of the land. And yes. There was definitely um, overcropping, I guess you could say. Uh, they, they exhausted the land. But the good thing about that is that um, <clears throat> you can always figure out ways to make that land fertile again. That's the reality of the situation. And there were great famines throughout all of history. So to just blame that on one racial group, I think it's pretty unfair. And then if that didn't happen, and if they didn't exploit and extract resources until my ancestors were left with nothing to eat, we wouldn't move to this grain heavy, very little nutritious diet that we have today. So um, <clears throat> her argument is that they overcropped and left no food so she's fat because she couldn't eat enough and only could eat certain foods. The math ain't mathin', the calories ain't adding up, baby. Also, if white people didn't come to the Indian subcontinent, then my ancestors would not go through 50. Okay, she's talking about India. Small, medium, large famines in a period of 200 years. Okay, so like I said, there have been famines throughout all of history. It's not just Indians who face famine. Um, as a matter of fact, the Chinese face famine. Um, even people in the Middle East face famines. Uh, Africans face famines. Uh, you know, even in um, <clears throat> the Americas, in the Midwest, there was a drought 
um, in the uh, the early 19th century. So everybody has faced famines before. It's not just because of white people. Now, were were farmers abusing the land to create more crops at, at, at some time? Yes, but that was pretty much everywhere. Okay, that was pretty much everywhere. So. You know, it, 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 it's wild how she's trying to pull this back into what's happening with her own personal diet today. But let's keep listening. That's a lot. And in 1943, nearly 3 million people would not have died due to starvation and malnutrition. And if that didn't happen, then this entire place... Um, and the people of this place would not adapt to survive on lower calories. We also wouldn't biologically be... I'm sorry, so let me just get this straight. You adapted to survive off of lower calories, but you're overweight. Make it make sense. We programmed to hold on to more fat because my genes they always think okay you're gonna die at some point there's gonna be guys you don't have to be a geneticist to know that your genes are not thinking in their mind oh at some point you're gonna die like even if we go to like the life expectancy of the average hood dude your genes your dna is like oh you know my uncle got shot three years ago so i'm up next you're <laughs> Your genes are not like actively thinking about the fu your future. They react to what you put in your body. Now, obviously, you can have genetic mutations that, um, you know, hinder you in, in certain ailments and whatnot, like diabetes or all these different things. But we're not talking about that. We're just talking about the reason why she is fat. And the reality is, if your family experienced famine and droughts and food shortages, then shouldn't that mean that you should probably more be more skinny? That your genes were thinking, hey, we ain't going to have enough food today. So whatever we get, we are going to savor it. A famine, you will not have food and you're going to die. I would also not be prone to diabetes, heart, high blood pressure, um, heart disease and, and all that other things. So yeah, white people is the reason why I can't lose weight. Jesus Christ. I mean, <laughs> and this is Indian women. I, I, I was actually debating like this Muslim guy. And if you guys didn't know, India has a huge Muslim population. I think one of the top Muslim populations in the world, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and he was like, oh, well, you know, the Muslim women, da, 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 they're going to. And look, I'm not trying to bag on Muslim women. You know what I'm saying? Inshallah. But at the same time, it's like once you once they come to the West, bro, it's a wrap. OK, you could say they're going to hold on to their tradition. They're going to hold on to their culture. They're still going to cover up. Dude, do you know how many women who were from Muslim countries, they come to the West and they, you know, with all due respect, inshallah, but they hate they hate the, the idea and the concept of Islam and, and the restrictive I'm not saying that Islam is restrictive, but I'm just saying from their perspective, the restrictive mindset of the old guard of Islam, they hate it with a passion. A lot of the women who come over here um, from those countries completely rebel, okay? Just like a lot of these Southern Baptist girls who were um, <clears throat> locked in the crib and, and, and whatnot, what, what happens to them is they turn out to be freaks when they get released to college, released to the world, released to the streets, and that's what happens, okay? It's no different from Muslim women. So I'm not saying that she is uh, Muslim. I'm not saying any of that. I'm just saying she's Indian, and there is a possibility that she is um, Muslim, okay? Or at least understands the culture. So, hey, man, it just goes to show that they're pretty much the same um globally once they come to the west okay because i don't believe that she's actually still in india i think she is indian but just to give her some advice 
you could get the Reclaim Your Throne Elite D1 training course and it would help you lose weight substantially. Also, you could go on a calorie deficit so that you are, um, you know, working out and losing more calories than you're intaking every day. That's pretty much all you have to do. Um, <laughs> so, you know, get rid of the racism, get rid of the, rid of the excuses, and you're pretty much ready to go. So anyways, you already know what it is, man. It's your boy, Reclaim Your Throne. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe. Send your relationship questions to the email down below with a screenshot of your cash app so I know you're paying your tithes, man. Y'all need to be on your marketing game with the BS. And you already know. Reclaim Your Throne. Want to become an elite level athlete? Well, look no further. The Reclaim Your Throne Elite D1 training course is all you need to take your performance from subpar to the creme de la creme of athletes all around the world. The purpose of this course is to give you a comprehensive weight training, speed, flexibility, recovery, and endurance program that is meant to prepare young athletes for collegiate and professional sports. This course is packed with over two hours of creative, action-packed lifts narrated and coached by yours truly to assure increased strength, speed, flexibility, recovery, and endurance. Hey, I get it. Training alone can be tough and can even make you feel misguided or somewhat unmotivated. But with this course, I walk you step by step through each and every lift to make sure you're using the proper form to prevent injuries and that you're hitting the correct muscle groups to render maximum results. So what are you waiting for? It's now or never. So go ahead and get the training course today so you too can reclaim your throne.